Well, it seems like only yesterday we did an, uh, we did an SOS conversation board, but that was three weeks ago. Why three weeks? Well, we were going to have we had holidays for two weeks, and then we had before that we had a week off with COVID. Yay! I can honestly say now that I have had it. I don't want it again. Anyway, conversations. So we're back after three weeks. Some of the conversations that we had here at SOS involve some of our amazing students. So firstly, the Braveheart 777, which is seven marathons in seven days. Um, Carol, the amazing Carol Cooper, did the half marathon in Canberra after never running a half marathon before. So... Great work, Carol. Well done. Tammy Emmons decided to go a little bit further in distance and in location and went and did the marathon up on the Goldie. Tough life for some people. That's all I have to say. You know, a week on the Gold Coast in, um, you know, the weather that's about two overnight um, and gets up to 18, they're cracking days, but, you know, that's that two degrees that um, Tammy's going to love to come back to. Um, NRL. For those that don't know, the NRL Players Association have decided that there'll be no game interviews with any players l leading up to including State of Origin 3. Why? Because it's their way of showing to the NRL that they're, that what they have put on the board is not right. So congratulations to the Players Association to um, coming out and making such a big call. Um, I hope you get what you want and you really, really should because you bloody deserve it. Because there's, it's no longer, it's no longer a amateur sport. You guys are professionals and you ladies are professionals. So congratulations and let's hope the NRL actually listens to you. On another point of rugby league, this is my bold prediction, Queensland to win 3-0. So anybody listen to this that, that knows the hierarchy in New South Wales Rugby League, can we do something that Queensland have done? Can we take our, can we take our State of Origin shorts and put the postcode on the back? Why? Because I think that gives Queensland and their supporters a bit of pride in who they are and where they've come from because they'd like to have their postcode on their sleeve. And as a, as a player, I have no doubt that that would make you stiffen up your defence and, and potentially take that ball up a bit harder when you know that you are doing it for your... For your town and in your and for your state. Now I could be wrong, and most of the times I am, but I just think that that's where they have the they have the upper hand because they just seem to be playing for everybody in their state instead of playing for individuals. On another topic of rugby league, the Rise program has kicked off again back down here in Group 16 in Sunny Bega um, last year. We had 15 kids. This year, we've got 29. So the program um, is definitely up and running. And the best thing about it is that it, it, it has some really strong components around mental health and mental resilience and how to build it, especially for 13, 14 and 15 year olds who may not you know, ever, you know, ever, ever play NRL or, or represent their or represent their area or their state or their country, and this is the reason why I'm involved because it really gets to the heart of what rugby league is about. Rugby league isn't just playing, you know, state of origin or playing NRL. It's about the grassroots stuff, and if if you can have a kid that plays all their, you know, that plays throughout their junior, you know, their junior leagues and then goes, okay, I'm not going to make 18s because I'm not going to be good enough for it, but I'm going to coach, or I'm going to manage a side, or I'm actually going to get into strength and conditioning, or I'm going to actually be a trainer. 
That's how we get the game to grow, by keeping those juniors involved and interested in the sport. So well done to the NRL, well done to QRL, and well done to New South Rugby League and every other rugby league state who's actually picked this program up. Cricket. Apparently we play cricket in the winter. And we probably always have, especially when the Ashes are along. But here's the thing. Pommy Dave has come back. And his comment is on the board, at least in does it involve sandpaper or underarm bowling. Now, underarm bowling is within the rules of the game. Sandpaper, isn't it? Um, and, the, you know, stay in it. For everyone who plays cricket, stay in your crease. As a kid, when I used to play, you put the, you, you put your, you know, you put your, you slide your bat in and you go safe. Then you can walk out of your crease to do whatever you want to. So when I was a kid, you'd basically walk down to the concrete, give it a tap because that's what AB did when I was a kid. Walk down, give it a tap, and hopefully that would deflect a tennis ball, you know, into a more, you know, into a more smacking position if possible. Um, so, yeah. So if you're going to bat, stay in your crease. And if you get run out, all well, it's the rules, and you can. Um, as I mentioned at the top, yeah, we did have COVID. I can honestly say now that I have had it, don't want it again. Um, joint pain and fatigue were two of the big things that I got out of it, um, which is oh, not lucky. Um, so, yeah. Holidays. And the big thing that I can say here is, you know, you know while we were going to venture um, in a state and, and go and visit some family, um, you need to remember that you need to love where you live. So, you know, and for those that live in the Bega Valley, we got as far south as Pambula and we got as far north as Bermagui. Both two very long, like, both huge drives. Um, but, you know, after having COVID, that really knocked us around. And that's something that, um, you know, that, you know, we, we're probably, you know, we, we are really lucky to, to live where we are because... You know, from Bega to the beach is 20 minutes um, to some of the best food, you know, in New South Wales, you know, Marimbula, Pambula, um, Candelo for a, for a gorgeous Candelo Sochi Droll um, and then off to um, Bermagui for, um, for some lovely German food and beer. Um, so, you know... Love where you live, folks, because you're always going to find something that is better here than if you go away for it. Last subject is books. Um, and for me, books are something that I love to read. And, you know, while I do have a Kindle and I have used a Kindle in the past, just being able to thumb through a book is just something I think that just makes, for me, just sort of excites the brainwaves a little bit. Um, and I heard a quote today, and it's probably been, it's probably pretty simple. So in the strength and conditioning world, there's a whole bunch of people out there that coach, and they coach really well. But you ask them to read a book, and they go, no. All the stuff that I need to learn is here. Now, and if you've been a coach for, you know, if you've been a coach for five or ten years your theory and your practical stuff should be really on point, all right? But it's that learning skills and it's that, so, you know, and they call it soft learning, that soft learning skills to be able to develop a relationship um, both inside the gym and outside the gym with your clients that I think a lot of people are lacking, all right, and especially those young, those young coaches. So if I can give anybody one bit of advice, buy a book, read it, all right? That's it for the third for, for June for July. Sorry, I've skipped a month. Um, yeah, peace out. Enjoy the weekend. Go Raiders.